Hi, and welcome to another navigation video. This time we're discussing the relationship between calibrated airspeed and Mach number. Now when you're flying high in a jet, you use a Mach meter like this one. But in King Airs, like the one we fly, we have a, an airspeed indicator with a barber pole. Now in very light aircraft, the airspeed indicator has a red line known as VNE and it doesn't change with altitude. But with the turboprop, we are limited both by our airspeed and by our Mach number. The King Air that we fly has a VMO speed of 259 knots calibrated, but it also has an MMO speed, maximum Mach number, of 0 0.52. At lower altitudes, the barber pole indicates our VMO velocity. In other words, it points at 259 knots. But above a certain altitude, the barber pole begins to move down because we are Mach limited. In other words, 259 knots calibrated is more than Mach 0.52. In this video, we'll examine at what altitude the barber pole begins to decrease and the effect of temperature on the reading of the barber pole. To explore this, we'll bring out our CX-2, switch to flight mode, select airspeed, and then planned true airspeed. And we'll enter a calibrated airspeed of 259 knots. But now we have our first question. What should the outside air temperature be? Now that's the whole point of this video, but at this point we don't know the answer. So let's just uh, arbitrarily choose a value of zero degrees. Now initially let's set the pressure altitude to zero and see what we get. So you can see we have uh, a true airspeed of 252.2 knots and a Mach number of 0.3915. So in this case the Mach number is well below the limit of 0.52. So at sea level we know that the barber pole is going to be at 259 knots. Okay, now let's try a pressure altitude of 10,000 feet. At 10,000 feet, we now have a true airspeed of 301 knots, but that's still only Mach 0.468. So it's still less than Mach 0.52, so the barber pole remains at 259 knots. Now, the temperature still set to zero degrees. You're probably thinking that's not a very realistic temperature for 10,000 feet, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, now let's change the pressure altitude to 20,000 feet. So now we get 364 knots true airspeed but the Mach number is now 0.566 and that is faster than Mach 0.52 so this is unacceptable in this situation we know that at 20,000 feet the barber pole will be less than 259 knots in fact it turns out that it will be at 237 knots as shown here now the, the first question I have for you is what altitude does a calibrated airspeed of 259 knots equal Mach 0.52? Obviously the answer is somewhere between 10,000 and 20,000 feet as we've just seen. There's no way to calculate it directly with the CX-2. We're just going to have to guess. So why don't we just try right in the middle, 15,000 feet, and see what that gives us. So at 15,000 feet, We've got a true airspeed of 331 knots and Mach 0.51. Well, we're pretty close, but at this altitude, at 15,000 feet, the barber pole would still be at 259 knots because we're not yet Mach limited. Now we'll take one more guess. I happen to already know what the answer is. 15,600 feet, and you see here that that gives us exactly Mach 0.52. Okay, so at 15,600 feet, the barber pole will begin to come off the stop, and as you climb above that altitude, it will decrease. But you're thinking, wait a minute, Ray, 
the temperature is not right. There's no way it's zero degrees at 15,000 feet. And it certainly wasn't zero degrees at 20,000 feet. So this is where it gets really interesting. Let's try a little experiment now. We'll leave the pressure altitude at 15,600 feet. Let's put in a more realistic temperature, such as negative 15. Watch and see what happens when I hit enter. And pretty cool. The Mach number is still exactly 0.52. So you're thinking, that's really weird because I know that when the temperature decreases, the speed of sound decreases. So why doesn't that affect the Mach number? Well, unless you were watching really close, maybe you didn't notice the true airspeed changed when we changed the temperature. Let me do another example for you. This time I'll make it really cold. Maybe we're in the, in the Arctic in the winter time. We'll make the temperature negative 60. Now this time when I hit enter, don't watch the Mach number. I promise you it's not going to change. Watch the true airspeed. So you see the true airspeed decreased all the way down to 295.8 knots. But the Mach number is still 0.52. So with an outside temperature of minus 60 degrees, the speed of sound is 568.9 knots. So if we take our true airspeed of 295.8 and divide by 568.9, we get Mach 0.52. Now let's change the temperature one more time. This time we'll make it ridiculously warm, say 30 degrees. So now you can see that the true airspeed has increased all the way up to 352.8 knots. But along with the warmer temperature comes a much higher speed of sound. It's now 678.5 knots. So again, if we take the ratio 352.8 divided by 678.5, we still get Mach 0.52. So what we learn from this is that even though temperature affects the true airspeed and the speed of sound, it does not affect the relationship between the calibrated airspeed and the Mach number. So that's why it's possible for your airspeed indicator to have a barber pole that accurately indicates your Mach limit even though there's no temperature input. That's the end of this video. Hope to see you next time for another navigation video. So long for now.